I am here with Brendan Clean of Locked On Suns. A little crossover action for you in the Suns coverage space. Uh, Brendan, obviously not a super busy offseason for the Suns, but they have brought a lot of their own free agents back. I just want to get your thoughts. What do you think about the job the Suns have done in terms of bringing some of their own guys back and then some of the guys they were able to go out and get in Mason Plumlee and Monte Morris? First of all, salute to Josh Okogie. Just, just winning in life right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, I think the regular season – floor is going to be a lot higher for this team. I mean, that that's the main way that I've been thinking about this. I think there's still a move. I think most Suns fans would hope there's still a move to come, but the depth of veterans that they got, it's going to make those injury-laden times a lot easier. We saw how bad it could get when guys are fighting for minutes and players are pressed into bigger roles. They'll avoid that at the very least, I think. All right, well, we're obviously out here at Summer League. We actually get to watch multiple new rookies for the Suns, which is an experience we haven't had in a while. What are you looking to see out of Ryan Dunn and Oso Iguodaro while they're here? Yeah, you wish it was a guard, right? Like, you wish the Suns had, like, drafted a guard just for this environment because it's easier for those guys to show what they're up to. We're saying Stephon Castle right here in San Antonio. It's like a wing who can do a lot of stuff. They don't always excel. But, look, I'm, I'm, I'm just wanting to see defensive flashes from both guys. I think you want to see moments where – they create a turnover, they go coast to coast, they just make those flash plays that shows like, hey, they're the best guys on the court athletically and, and they're able to do their thing. So hopefully the guards they did bring in make them look a little better and we can see some fun stuff. When you look at the second tax apron stuff, that's been the big talk of the off season. We saw teams like the Nuggets and the Clippers do everything they could to get under that. The Suns taking the exact opposite <laughs> approach and diving head first. What's your read on how that has kind of affected the way teams are thinking about this and the way that the Suns decided to attack it? I mean, look, the Suns, the Suns locked themselves into this situation before the CBA ever happened, right? I mean, the Kevin Durant trade, they did not knowing this was going to happen. The only alternative pathway would be to get worse. You know, you get rid of Chris Paul, you get your mid-level exception, you can do all that revisionist history. It doesn't make a lot of sense. So. I think they, they've they've operated like they had to, but that still is a huge salute to Matt Ishbia. That takes a lot more spending than other teams have been willing to do. You could say the same things for a lot of other teams who still didn't do that. So, you know, uh, but we'll see. They, they created a lot more flexibility for themselves this summer and depth, and they should be better suited to, to be better and then get even better beyond that, ideally. Last one, to your point on that, like obviously the Suns are basically bringing back a lot of the same core. They've tweaked on the margins a little bit. Is there something to be said for we still have Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, Bradley Beal, our core intact, maybe a year of continuity changes the ceiling? I think you have to hope, right? I mean, I think my, my refrain since the end of the season is like, the big three have to do things that big threes don't always do, that superstar All-NBA max players don't always do just because of how this roster is constructed. You can say they have to be better. That's obvious. Anybody who sees an ends early, they have to be better. But whether it's taking more threes, taking defensive assignments, you know, rebounding, any of that stuff, like it does gonna, it's going to have to come down to them too, just like we see with all big threes. You know, Chris Bosh probably didn't love what he had to do every day, but that's how they won a championship. So I, I think a lot of it's going to be about that, and can Bud put them in position to do it?